All right. So today we're going to discuss a little bit more about um, conditional probability. I'm going to review that. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the other side of that coin, which is dependent events. We're going to talk about how I know the difference between whether something's independent or dependent. And that's the, the kind of the big takeaway from today. So conditional probability. Remember last time we said, given that something has already happened, now what's the probability of this happening? So for instance, uh, did you know that 15% uh, of all salad orders at the Sizzler um, want, I don't know, Thousand Island dressing? Sure. Fact. Fact. Furthermore, did you know that of all of the orders that you have there, 3.2% of all orders, of all salad orders, get beets and Thousand Island? Okay, so the question is simply this: What is the probability that we will get beets on a salad, or uh, given that we had Thousand Island dressing? <laughs> okay, so again, what is that saying to us? In other words, what percent of Thousand Island dressing salads? have beets. I literally don't know, but I do know that the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A and B both happening over the probability of A alone. In this case, probably the Thousand Island dressing was 15% of all orders. 3.2% of all orders, you see, are uh, Thousand Island and beets. When you divide that out, you'll see that about 21% of all, 21% uh, of the Thousand Islands salads have beets as well, okay? Now, I notice again, this is out of everyone. This is out of everyone, okay? It's kind of a big deal. It has to be thought of that way. <laughs> um, of the people with shingles, that's a virus thing caused by the chicken pox virus. What percent are over 50? I don't know. To do that, I would need to know the probability that the person is over 50 and has shingles. And the probability that a person has just shingles. And the answer will be given by simply dividing these two probabilities out. So of all people, 27% get shingles. Out of all people, literally the most that could ever have shingles is 27%, period. Because that's all there are. So shingles and over 50, let's say, is um, 25%. You're like, geez, that's most of That's right. Most people that get shingles are older people. Okay, great. So you divide that out, whatever that comes out to be. Oh, come on, hippie. About 93%. 93% of the people who have shingles are over 50. <laughs> Same exact question. Okay. 93% or thereabouts. That's conditional probability. Now, the other side of that coin is simply this. Let's look at it thus. Suppose you have a hat with, I will say that these are marbles, and then later on I'm going to change my mind and call them Skittles, and later on, I'll, because I hate Skittles, I will actually call them M&Ms. Point is, they're little round things that you can't tell them apart. Like, you can't tell them apart by feel. Stick your hand in the bag, not looking. 
you can't tell what color they are. You just reach in and grab some. Secondly, typically, although at first we're going to take them one at a time, typically a fella reaches into a bag of M&M's, marbles, what have you, and grabs a handful at a time. For right now, we're just going to take one at a time. What's the probability that I get a red marble? I hate that. I'm sorry. I can't do that to you people. It's like, I know it does the same thing in black, but I can't deal with it when it's in another color. I cannot write red when it's in green. I cannot write pink in a different color. It drives me crazy. Thanks a lot, Victoria's Secret. Now, there are five reds out of a total of uh, 5, 7, 9, 11, 15, 17, 19, 21, 23, 27, 29, 30. I like that. Well, that's good work, Jay. Nice. So looks like five out of 30 of them are red. That seems pretty easy. Now, if I eat the red one, or don't. Or just put it in my pocket or whatever. Now there are clearly 29 left. Yes? Now what is the probability that I get a black one? Well, it depends. It depends on what, Jay? Well, it depends on what you got the first time. Oh, that's right. Depend so given that I got a red one the first time. So red, I got one the first time. There's only 29 left. That's what that affects. But black, there's still one, two, three, four, five, eight blacks. But now that's eight out of 29. Okay? Had I said to you, hey, what's probably I get a red, given I got a red, well, then that would be a big difference. There's still 29 marbles, but there's not five anymore. There's only four of them because, again, you ate the other one. You see, these are dependent because we are selecting without replacement. Okay? Notice, and I'm going to clarify out of oh you hippie out of a small population now had this been an 18 wheeler with a 53 foot box on it make it a reefer while you're at it that'd have been Cool, of M&M's, oh, that's an eight, I don't know what I was trying to draw, an ampersand, I guess, that's not how you draw an ampersand, nice, cool, these are M&M's, uh, just offhand, there are a lot of M&M's in this trailer, am I right, or if you prefer, here's an Olympic size swimming pool, How many M&Ms can you fit in there? Um, like literally millions of them. So if you took one or two or even a handful out, would you notice a difference? And the answer is no. In these two cases here, whether you replace them, whether you put it back in or not, has no impact on anything because the sample size is so large it wouldn't matter. For instance, let's say that two million red ones out of thirty million. Well. 2 million divided by 30 million to 30 is that tiny little number right there, yes? <laughs> now what is Is that number there? Let me get you an approximate for that. And 1 divided by 15, let me get you an approximate for that. And what you notice is they're, for all intents and purposes, the same probability. Okay? So out of a large sample, it matters not at all whether you put it back or not. But out of a small sample, it's very much a dependent probability if you are sampling without replacement. Dependent matters. So dependent and conditional, again, two sides of the same coin. Because you know it depends on what you got the first time. So you need to tell me, hey, listen, I got a blue, let's say, the first time. So then that I know how to make an, uh, a change so I get the right answer. Let's put that back in there. Okay, now, what is the probability that I get a black, then a blue? Black, I'm sorry, a black and a blue. 
uh, in that order. And again, let's do without replacement. <coughs> oh, fart. Okay, let's do it. Okay, well, what had to happen first? I need to get a black. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of 30. And means multiply. And then blue. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten out of twenty-nine. That is whoosh, whoosh, eight out of fifth, uh, eight out of eighty-seven. Yay! And the crowd goes wild. Now, what if you just said, "Listen, I need a, I need a black and a blue." Period. Well, if you think about this, you took them two at a time. But in reality, that's the same as taking one and then reaching back and grabbing another. Yes? And so, the idea is I could do black and then blue. Or blue and then black. Well, black and blue is this one. So we know that answer is 8 out of 87. Or means add. And so the other way around would be 10 out of 30 times 8 out of 29. These again cancel 1 and 3. And you get the same answer. That is 8 out of 87. Or in other words, 16 out of 87 is your final answer. The idea being is that if you're less picky, you've got more options. I want a black and a blue. Does it matter what order they came? No. So I could do black, then blue, or blue, then black. And in this case, it's simply a doubling situation. Oftentimes it is, but not always. Sometimes you have to stop and think about it. Right. Uh, let's see here. Let's do another one here. Oh, so let's do this again here. What if I said to you, my favorite TV, one of my favorite books, of, one of my favorite books, one of my favorite story problems of all time was this. Uh, a guy does a commercial. He pays for a commercial to be done. When he got done and they ran his spot on the radio or the TV or whatever, he realized that his sales actually went down. The only thing that changed is the sale, is that, is that, that, uh, is that uh, um, commercial. What's wrong? Well, the probability that someone shops at a store, or the sales, and he gets a certain number of sales, given that the people watched his commercial, is less than, according to what he just told me, people that were the probability of making a sales just before it sells. What does that say about the commercial? It says that the commercial sucks. You're running people out of your store. They're not wanting to buy your product anymore. It's like, hey, look at our, our the way we do our salmon or whatever. Oh, oh, oh. Well, look at you. You're yeah, you're clubbing seals over the head to get the salmon from them. And oh no, we don't want any part of your store. And the people are running away. What you'd like to have happen is your sales, given that they watch the commercial. You would like them to be greater than the probability that you make a sale, just in general. Okay. If they were equal, this also means you have a sad commercial. If they were the same, it means that that thing had zero impact on your business. Now, I'm not sure which is worse. I guess driving them out of the store is worse. It doesn't seem very logical that that would happen. However doing a poor commercial and having no difference in sales, that actually could happen. So the idea here is, is this, if, if the probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B alone, in other words, A had no impact on B. And if that is true, then what we'd say is, is that A and B are independent okay now another way to say that is this a and b are independent if and only if the probability of b given a is equal to the probability of b alone 
Now, what does that tell me? It says, if I tell you they're independent, you know this is true. If you can show this is true, they are independent. That's what if and only if means. Okay? It's a big deal. We use that a ton in, in statistics going forward. Okay? Now, I'd like to show you one using a pivot table as what it would look like. Oh, darn it. Oh, my form drive. One moment, please. Um, what that would look like in a pivot table. Okay? What, what it would look like for there to be independence in a pivot table set of data, okay? So if I can get this stupid thing set up, we'll have some fun. Maybe we will, heck I don't know, maybe we won't. All right, I will pause you momentarily. Okay, so what I did is I, I went ahead and pulled this data up from somewhere I've had in the past where I have uh, hair colors and eye colors. And if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, I would expect people with black hair to not have hardly any blue eyes. And yet, they have the same proportion of blue eyes as basically as everybody else does. And that's, well, that's just weird. It's a little weird. And ditto with the red hair. Red hair has all different color of eyes. Gray hair has all different color of eyes and so on and so on and so on. It's a little weird. And the idea behind that is, is that that is what independence looks like. If this data, and I'm going to copy it and do something different here. Am I? I think I'm going to do this instead. Uh, I guess I'll copy that. No, maybe I will. Control C. There you go. No, let me try. No, maybe. No, wrong. Okay, we'll try it again, folks. There you go, dumma. Big dumma. Cool, there it is. Now watch. If this were more realistic, you'd have one of these and, I don't know, a bunch of these and, um, yeah, some of that and probably some of that, sure. And then blonde hair, you might have... I don't know. I'm just making this stuff up as I go. And whatever. I don't know. And then brown, blue. Yeah, sure. Brown, sure. Green, I guess. Hazel, that seems a little odd and awkward and weird. Let's do 10. And yeah, how about that? Um, and yeah nice if you're looking at this you're thinking to yourself yep that's exactly what i expected to happen i hardly see any people with black hair and blue eyes from the factory that's just weird okay whereas you see it's phenomenal a good share of about a little over 25 percent maybe 30 percent of the blondes have blue eyes okay and notice that the gray hair people have all different colors of eyes well how about that gray and bald we start off with all the same, we all start off with different color hairs. We all tend, old men turn to gray and bald. Uh, that's how it goes. And of course, there aren't many reds, but proportionally speaking, there's hardly any of them that have hazel eyes. This is a classic case of dependence. We see this in statistics all the time. It matters what hair color you have. Depend, it, 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 it impacts what color of eye color you have. Now, it doesn't cause it, but we say it's dependent. So we say things like your hair color, or we say eye color, either one. Eye color, dependent on hair color. Yeah, but the idea being is that they uh, they both vary uh, because, you know, obviously you have brown hair, you have the genes that tend, tend typically have different color eyes than versus if you have blonde hair versus if you have black hair. They're different. It would be weird if they were the same. Okay, there was a kid I had in class a couple years ago, like five years ago, maybe at the high school now, and she had black hair, and she had just the most piercing blue eyes ever. And finally, one day I asked her, I said, "Are those are your eyes real?" And she's like, "Why is everybody asking?" I'm like, "What do you mean, why is everybody asking?" I said, "Obviously, because it's weird that you'd have that color of eyes, and um, it's just absolutely weird that you'd have that color of eyes." 
And she's like, wow, that's just weird, don't you think? And I said, no, I don't think it's weird at all. I said, it's, it's uh, just, it is what it is. So people, you know, your eyes stand out. So obviously people are going to ask about them. And uh, yeah, it was just an idea of, you know, how um, that it, maybe it's just a little odd. So this one here, notice that there aren't many in the middle here in the Maple Nut and Rocky Roads. How about that? Versus, oh, favorite veggie. That's not what I wanted to put. I wanted to put feeling about running. Oh, not there. I want to put it up here. Nice. Nice. And as you can see, there are some oddball scenarios here. For instance, you know, first of all, everyone loves strawberry. I mean, duh. But clearly this is the highest one, right? And then it drops off to this one here. And so you're like, I'm not really sure what those percentages look like. Well, you could do this. You could say of the people who have fun, you could say equals this guy. Oh, fart. I'm not going to do that. One moment, please. I'm going to copy this data to another page. If that's okay with you. And the idea here is, is that if I look at it, if you look at it here, the chocolate people of, uh, equate to what percent of the total? Chocolate is 21% of the total. And so on and so on and so on. Yes? Okay, strawberry is 43%. That's nice. Well, here's what I want to know. Equals this guy divided by this guy. Mm -hmm. Oops, what are you doing, stupid? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. And there you have it. So if you look, see how these are hover right around the low 20%, just like this one, 21%. These are a little weird. You see this? This was down around 5%. That's a little low. But they're all right around the 13% mark there. This is all around 9%, supposedly, overall. But look what you got here. Oh, this isn't right at all. Hang on. Let's get rid of these guys. I didn't mean to do that. So, yeah, you got 22, 19, 26. So the overall is 21. And then you got 5, 14, and 11. Eh, this one's a little concerning to me. You get 17, you got 7, and you got 10. And this one, again, is a little concerning to me. Uh, right around 42%. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then right around 14%, amazing. So because these two are a little off, it says to me that, that what, what you feel about running might have a little something to do with your flavor of ice cream. Again, it's not a causation. In this case, it could be just be something very strange happening. It's not a big deal, though. Okay. Uh, if you were to put kinds of cars, so PT Cruiser, which has a classic, you know, old grandma feel to it, Unless you're a high school kid, and that's that happens to be the car that grandma gave you to drive in. Um, if you did male, female, and so you did that, you did a brand new Porsche, and you did a truck with ladder racks. And a minivan, my dad notwithstanding, and me notwithstanding when the kids were young. If you saw something driving one of those cars on a road, what would you think? Well, you'd think maybe this is something like 2 and like, I don't know, 20. And out of all the people that are driving by in a brand new Porsche, I would be shocked if it wasn't something like, you know, 14 and 0 maybe. And... The truck with ladder racks is probably 30 and like 3 or something, whatever. And it might be something like 10 and, you know, 20, whatever. The idea being is these are nowhere near the same proportions, okay? Clearly, men and women favor different vehicles for different reasons, okay? My dad loves his minivan. He bought us a brand new one a couple years ago, and he's, he just won't shut up about it. I'm like, it's a freaking minivan. Shut up about it already. But... Yeah, again, he loves it, but again, that notwithstanding. So in this case, you'd say, well, these seem to be different, all right, because they are different proportions of the total. For instance, if you did this equals, uh, let's see how many women there are here. Let's do this this way here. Equals sum. 
Oh, how about you tell it what to add up, stupid? How about the sum of these guys and the sum of those guys? That's cool. And so if you did this, if you went equal, let's do the equals to sum here just for a good time. That's a lot of wasting time to add those all up, but I'll do it anyway. I don't care. There we go. Cool. So equals uh, this guy divided by this guy. And then drag him down. And drag him over. Okay, as you can see, female, male-wise, it's you know roughly fifty-six percent male. Yes. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Wait, I didn't. Um, there we go. So fifty-six percent dudes. That means the rest that's 43% women. Notice that these two numbers here are nowhere near those guys. Neither of these two, neither of these two, neither of these two. These ones aren't too bad. Okay. But the idea here being what? The idea here being, um, well, these are the exact because I, I counted the total. That was dumb. Anywho, what I was saying, what I started to say was, is that the idea is because they are so radically different than the proportion of male and female, what you would say is, is that what you call, what cars people drive on, cars drive, what cars people drive, uh, is dependent on gender. Now, it doesn't mean you cannot drive whatever you want to drive. You're certainly welcome to do that. What it's saying is that there's a preponderance of things. Women like this kind of car, men tend to like this kind of car. If they, you've ever wondered if this isn't true, Right. By the way, I got called into the office at PCC some years ago. This we were doing this thing one time, and I asked people, and then they got they got a little bit of trouble. Whatever. Well, I didn't really get in trouble. I just quit doing that. I'm like, nah, whatever. It's called demographics. There's a reason when you turn Oprah on, certain commercials play during Oprah. Those commercials will not show up during the Super Bowl. They just won't. Okay. They won't show up during uh, this old house uh, or you know whatever. Oh, that's sexist. No, people look at the demographics and they pay good money to analyze the demographics and they say that the market share for this particular broadcast, for whatever it is, Oprah, let's say, is predominantly women. Predominantly women in this age group, therefore that's who you should target in your uh, advertisements. I don't know about you, but I listen to the... I, don't, I listen to... I listen to stations on the radio that old people, old men listen to. And as such, I'm constantly bombarded with, do you need Viagra commercials? Do you need divorce for dad commercials? Do you need whatever else it is commercials? Wait, this is hitting close to home. That's right, because they know that people who listen to these commercials are in this age range with these needs. And that's why they, they advertise there. They do not advertise the latest rap crap concert on my stations because no one who listens to my station listens to rap very much. They do not list on my thing something about the latest, you know, women's hair care products because predominantly women do not listen as much to the stations that I happen to listen to. That's just, that has to be why because they pay, again, good analytical money to study those things. Now, there are some times when you're watching the show and you're like, oh, this is a pretty good show. And you're looking at it and you're like, wow. Every other commercial on the station, or maybe every third commercial, appeals to me. And the person next to you is like, yeah, that's true for me too, but it's different than the ones that appeal to you. Oh, that's because there's a huge widespreadness there. Okay, that idea that it would be, um, you know, it's whatever it is. Again, men and women is the easiest one to pick out, but there's all kinds of other demographics, age demographics as well, come into play. Uh, that's the whole purpose of conditional and dependent probability, specifically dependent. Now, again, what because what you drive is dependent on gender, what people drive is dependent on gender. Not what you drive, but what people drive is dependent on gender. That's all it says. It doesn't say you have to drive it. It doesn't say you're you're being pressured to drive it. No, it just says that it's there's a relationship there. Please never tell me that your gender 
is dependent on what car you drive because that's weird that's just weird okay that's absolutely strange so don't do that okay always flip it around the other way now on the previous page i think i said something to the effect of that uh, hair color is dependent on eye color i could have written that one the exact opposite way and it would have been just as fine we know that they both depend on something else that is genes and so just be aware of that going forward okay there's one more thing i wanted to mention today and that is the concept and i mentioned it previously but i want to kind of just mention this again suppose you were to go roll a dice and i hate rolling dice but let's just for the sake of argument let's roll a dice what's the probability that i roll at least one six in the next 20 rolls I don't know, but the only way that I would be unhappy is if I got zero sixes, yes? That's the only thing that would make me unhappy. So, what I really need to do, and I think it's the easiest way to do it, is I, because I could get one six, or I could get two sixes, or three sixes, or four sixes, or five sixes, or six sixes, or 17 sixes, or 19 sixes, or 20 sixes. That is a lot of work to do. The only thing that would make me happy, unhappy, is if I got zero sixes. If I got zero sixes, I would be very angry. So what's the probability that this happens? Well, I don't know. Oh, yes, you do. It's five out of six times five out of six times five out of six. Why times? Because I got a not six the first time and not six and not six. And wait, aren't there 20 of them, Jay? That's right. Right there, that's the probability that I will get zero sixes. But that's not what I want. This is the only thing that makes me unhappy. Therefore, everything else makes me happy. So the probability of at least one is one minus the probability of zero. So one minus the probability of five, six to the 20th power. Ta -da, 0.97, about 97% chance of that happening. It'd be very strange, in other words, if you rolled 20 times and never got a 6. It'd be very strange. Remember, this is what is called a complement. A complement. That is, the opposite of at least 1 is 0. Okay? And we know they have to have to 100%. We will do that a ton going forward. Okay, so this week you've got 2.5 and 2.6. And, and 2.7. Or 2.7 is next week. Let me double check my notes. Yes, 2.7 is next week. Although we, I may send out a video to prep you for it. This week, I will be posting a pivot table assignment for you to work on. Um, and so 2.5, 2.4, 5, and 6 this week. Basically, we covered 2.4 and 2.5 somewhat last week. A little bit. There's videos for 2.5 in the folder. Go ahead and watch that. And 2.6, what we talked about here tonight. And then we'll see that going forward. Okay. Um, again, just a quick refresher. Remember, I say and. Your book will write it this way. Probability of A and B. Probability of A or B. Okay, remember this is intersection, this is uh, union of sets. Okay, um, and I think that's about all I wanted to talk about about this. So that should get you done easily.